Hey guys, it's me, Jeffrey. In the last episode, we last left off when Moses was on Mount Sinai. While at Mount Sinai, God gave Moses instructions on how to build a tabernacle for him to live in so he could live near his people. Let's hear the Bible story. When Moses was on Mount Sinai, God gave him instructions to build a place where he could live among them. It was to be called a tabernacle made of materials that could be packed up and moved as they traveled through the wilderness. Expensive metals, fine wood, leather, rich cloths, dyed threads, wood, and precious stones would be needed to make the tabernacle. Moses would tell everyone, God wants those who are willing to bring their gifts to build a tabernacle. We need precious metals and stones, strong acacia wood, linen, and cloth. We also need skilled workers. Every morning people would happily bring jewelry and objects made of gold, silver and bronze, ram skins, leather, acacia wood, fine linen, goat hair, expensive threads in blue, purple and scarlet, olive oil, spices, and precious stones. God told Moses that Bezalel and Oholiab, two fine craftsmen, should be put in charge of the work. They were filled with the spirit of God to be good in all the skills they needed to design artistically with metals, wood, and other materials. Other skilled workers would join them to make everything that God required. In God's plan, there was to be a large courtyard, 150 feet, 75 feet. There would be 20 posts down the longer sides and 10 down the shorter sides, each made of wood with a bronze base, silver hooks, and silver top. Finely twisted linen curtains were to be made to go between these posts. The entrance of the tabernacle was always to be pitched facing east. Curtains of finely embroidered blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen would be made for the entrance. Inside the courtyard, the tabernacle 45 of Dex 15th would stand. A strong wood frame was to be built and four covers to go over it. First, there was a layer of fine embroidered linen, then a layer of goat's hair. Over that was a layer of rum skin dyed red. On top was a cover made of a bluish animal skin. The tabernacle was to be divided into two rooms separated by a thick veil of fine linen embroidered with figures of angels in blue, purple and scarlet. Only priests would be allowed to enter the holy place. No one would be allowed behind the veil into the most holy place apart from the high priest. He would enter it once a year to bring the blood of a sacrificed animal to make peace with God for their sins. The only object made to go inside the most holy place was an ark made of acacia wood covered in gold. The cover mercy seat was made of pure gold, with two cherubim facing each other whose wings met and spread over the cover. It was over this cover the very presence of God would be. Golden poles and a cover were to be made for the priests to lift and move the ark on their travels. A table made of acacia wood covered in gold would be made for the holy place. It too had golden poles to carry it. It had plates, dishes and bowls all made of gold. Each week, twelve loaves of bread representing the twelve tribes of Israel, were to be placed on that table. A lampstand with seven branches, made of pure gold, was made to light up the holy place. A third piece of furniture for the holy place was a golden altar. Priests would use this to burn incense every morning and evening to make a pleasing aroma to God. A large bronze wash basin would be made so that the priests could wash their hands and feet before they served God in the tabernacle. It was to be made from brass mirrors. It was to be placed in the courtyard in front of the holy place. A square altar of acacia wood covered with bronze was made to go in the courtyard. At each comer was a bronze horn, and it had golden carrying handles. The altar would be used for people to bring a male animal without defect, cattle, sheep, goats, or birds if they were poor. They would put their hand on the animal to show it was being offered for them to make peace with God. The animal would be sacrificed, and its blood sprinkled on the altar. This shed of blood made it possible for God to forgive them for the wrong things they had done. The animal would then be burnt on the altar. Comments for the priests were to be made of white linen, but the high priest, Aaron, would get a special garment. It would have a blue sleeveless tunic and bells of pure gold sewn around the hem with woven pomegranates between them. And the high priest went into the most holy place those outside could hear the bells as he moved around and know he was still alive. Over the robe a richly embroidered effort of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet was worn. It was to be made in two pieces joined together at the shoulders with golden clasps. 
Each clasp was set with an engraved onyx stone. On his head the high priest would wear a turban made of fine linen, which was bound around the head in coils. On the front of the turban on Aaron's forehead, attached by a blue lace ribbon, was a golden plate engraved, holy to the Lord. A special breastplate for the high priest would be made. It would have twelve precious stones, each one engraved with the name of one of the twelve tribes of Israel. When everything was ready, the tabernacle would be built in the middle of the camp with three tribes on every side. Moses would place two tablets of stone containing God's laws into the ark and put the cover over it. When everything was finished, and Aaron and his sons would wash and put on their robes, the glory of God would fill the tabernacle. The cloud of God would be over it by day, and the fire of God every night. When the cloud lifted, the Israelites would dismantle the tabernacle and travel on through the wilderness. They would make camp and assemble it again. Wherever they were, God's presence would be there with Brandon and Brenda's help. We made this model of the tabernacle. The real tabernacle would have taken up half of a football or soccer field. Hebrews 8, 1, 5 tell us that there is a real tabernacle in heaven, and Jesus himself is our high priest. Isn't that amazing? The tabernacle was a movable tent of meeting. God commanded the Israelites to build the tabernacle because he wanted to dwell in the midst of his people. It's interesting to know that the tabernacle represents Jesus through symbolism. I'll explain how later. The tabernacle is divided into three sections, the court, the most holy place, and the holy place. The tabernacle itself is made up of two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place. The outer room, or the holy place, contained the table on which the bread of the present showbread was placed, the altar of incense, and the seven-branched candelabra of menorah. The area around the tabernacle was called the court. That's where the bronze altar and the bronze basin was located. The bronze altar represents the sacrifice of Jesus when he died on the cross to save us from hell. The bronze basin that contained the water the priests used to wash themselves represents the Holy Spirit and the word of God that cleanses and purifies. The lampstand represents Jesus, our light, and the light of the word John 8:12. The altar of incense represents the prayers and the intercession of Jesus for us. The table of showbread also represents Jesus because he is the bread of life. We can see that God's purpose and will is to dwell among us and communicate with us. The only way to reach God is through Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So accepting Jesus as our Savior is the only way we can reach God. In this way, we became sons and daughters of God. We can pray and talk to God and he will listen to us and we will live forever with God in heaven.